In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create these fun motion graphics in Cinema 4D and Redshift from scratch in under 20 minutes. Give me 20 minutes of your time and I'll show you how to create the animation, add lights, create materials, and render the scene. So let's dive right in. We'll start by creating the first project and then we'll build the second one using the first as our foundation. First, let's create the four cylinders for the balloons to navigate through. So add a cylinder change the orientation to plus Z, set the radius to three centimeters and the height to 50 centimeters. Press NB to display the edges of the geometry, set the height and rotation segments to 30 to each. Enable fillet under the caps tab, set fillet segments to three and radius to one centimeters. Now place the cylinder under a cloner by alt clicking the cloner object. In the cloner object, change the count to 4, 1, and 1, and adjust the size to 15 centimeters on the x axis. Cool. Next, let's create the balloons. So add a sphere, change the type to icosahedron for a more even distribution of the faces, and set the radius to 8 centimeters. Next, place the sphere under a cloner. Change the count to three on each axis, so we get around 27 balloons. Adjust the size to five centimeters, 26 centimeters, and six centimeters on the X, Y, and Z axis respectively. Now I want the balloons to distribute randomly along the Y axis for about 200 centimeters and then use gravity to make them rise and pass through the cylinders. And to do this, let's select the cloner and add a random effector to it. Reduce the position randomness to one centimeters for the X and the Z axis. And set the position Y randomness to approximately 224 centimeters. To prevent the balloons from intersecting, add a push apart effector to the cloner and set the push apart radius to around 11 centimeters. Now the spheres won't overlap, which is crucial for running a class simulation smoothly. Users enrolled in our latest course, Redshift Masterclass, your complete guide to Redshift for Cinema 4D, can download the full Cinema 4D files for this tutorial for free. Find the course link in the description. Next, let's add a Redshift standard camera. We can look through it. Increase the focal length to 120 millimeters for a more refined field of view. This will make your subject appear more prominent and minimizes distortion. Now let's set the render resolution. Since we are aiming for a vertical format, a resolution of 1000 by 1200 pixels should work perfectly. This looks nice and centered. Finally, let's make sure the balloons are not visible when the animation starts. So select the cloner object. Go to the transform tab and lower the Y position until the balloons are completely out of the camera view. Now let's keep things organized by renaming our cloners. First, we'll rename the initial cloner to cloner underscore cylinders. Then change the second one to cloner underscore balloons. Doing this will help us stay on track as we proceed with our project. Let's start working on the simulation. First, ensure the cylinders are fixed colliders. So right click on the cloner cylinders, navigate to simulation tags and add a collider tag next. Next, right click on the cloner balloons and add a soft body tag. If I exit the camera view and run the simulation, you'll see all the balloons fall while the cylinders remain stationary. Now we want the balloons to rise. To do that, press Ctrl D to open the scene settings. Then go to the scene tab and adjust the gravity from negative 981 centimeters to around 45 centimeters. If I play the simulation now, the balloons will start to ascend and collide with the cylinders. Let me increase the frame range to around 300 frames.
As the simulation progresses, you'll see the balloons rise and collide with the cylinders, but they are unable to pass through them. Now let's select the soft body tag and navigate to the surface tab. We want the balloons to bend more when they hit something and stretch a bit as well. So let's increase the bendiness to 25 and the stretchiness to five. If I play the animation again, It is better, but the balloon still cannot go through the cylinders. Next, let's lower the friction to zero so they might slide more easily. And to enhance collision accuracy, let's decrease the thickness to 0.5 centimeters. I'm also going to select the collider tag and lower the friction to zero there as well. If you want to learn Redshift for Cinema 4D, make sure to check out our Redshift Masterclass, your complete guide to Redshift for Cinema 4D course. This extensive 18-hour course covers every aspect of Redshift thoroughly, ensuring you gain expert-level knowledge and skills. Don't miss out. Click the link in the description to join us today. Now, if we run the simulation, you'll notice some of the balloons start to poke through the cylinders. Another issue we need to address is that the spheres are going around the cylinders. We need to ensure they are contained. And uh, let's quickly resolve this by adding a cube. And this will kind of contain the whole simulation. I'm going to change its size to 73 centimeters on X. 1140 centimeters and 64 centimeters. So it contains the entire simulation. You can press NG to see that. Now we'll need to add a collider tag to ensure the balloons hit the cube and stay within the cube. So first let's rename the cube to cube underscore collider. And add a collider tag. Set the collider side to be the back side of the cube. Now let's return to the camera view, press NB to see the faces again. We don't want the cube to render or abstract our view of the balloons. So let's turn off its render traffic light. Then add a display tag to it. And change its shading mode to lines. Now if I press play, you'll see the balloons are, are well contained within the boundary. And if we wait long enough, some of them might go through. Let's return to frame zero. Select the soft body tag again and reduce the poles density to 25% to decrease the number of internal poles, making the structure of the spheres softer and more flexible. The spheres move through nicely, however, with fewer poles, the structure integrity is reduced, causing them to remain bent for a long time after colliding with the sticks before recovering their initial shape. And to address this, we can add some internal pressure by enabling the balloon function. So go to the balloon tab, enable it, and increase the overpressure to 4, and set the expansion time to 30 frames. Now this looks great. If I pause where the first balloon hits the sticks, you'll notice some sharp edges. To smooth them out, let's add a subdivision surface to the cloner balloons. Next, press Ctrl D again and navigate to simulation and then the scene tab and enable simulate before generator to avoid any possible delay caused by the subdivision surface. You can expand the timeline to ensure all the balloons go through.
This looks pretty cool. Let's quickly cache it and prepare for lighting and shading. I'm gonna select the soft body tag again. Go to the cache tab and change the cache location to internal so that the cache is saved with the Cinema 4D file. Now click on cache scene and wait for about 20 seconds. Now that the scene is cached, let's move to frame around 100 or maybe 80 and start lighting the scene. We can also start IPR in the render view or in the viewport. Now we can focus on the lighting. I'm gonna add a simple dome light and load this bathroom underscore 4K HDRI from polyhaven.com. Rotate it to achieve the desired effect using the rotate on horizon option. I'm going to set it to negative 180 degrees and increase its intensity to 2.25. Next, select the camera and go to the background tab and set the background mode to override. And use a purplish pink color with RGB values of 224, 144 and 192. Now let's quickly work on the materials. I'm going to add a new standard material in the material manager and rename it to cylinders and assign it to the cloner cylinders object. Open the material in the node editor, add a color node and change the color to a bright pink and connect it to the base color input of the standard material, then increase the reflection roughness to 0.5. Next, increase the subsurface weight to 0.35 to add some subsurface scattering, and then connect the color node to the SSS color input as well. Lower the SSS scale to 0.35 and connect the same pink color node to the SSS radius as well. This looks nice. Now for the balloons, let's create a new material in the material manager. Rename it to balloons and assign it to cloners balloons. Next, copy the pink color node from the cylinder's material and paste it into the balloon's material. Select the standard surface material again, increase the subsurface weight to 1 and use the pink color node as the subsurface color input. Finally, increase the reflection roughness to 0.32. If we take a look at the rendered sequence, you'll notice that the balloons are green and as they come into contact with the pink cylinders, they temporarily take on the pink color before becoming green again. I created this effect using a simple distance node. So let's start by copying the pink color node and changing the color to green. Next, add a distance node and connect it to the subsurface color instead of the pink color node. In the distance node, change the include mode to trace set and the trace set mode to include. And then define the cloner cylinders object as the trace set objects. Set the distance near to 2 cm and the distance far to 8 cm. In my Redshift Masterclass for Cinema 4D, I covered the distance node in detail. Make sure to check the link for the course in the description. Here we are essentially saying that when the balloons which have this material applied to them get closer to the cylinders defined as the trace set objects, they use the near color when within 2 cm, which is the distance near amount, and the far color when 8 centimeters or more away, which is the distance far amount. 
So between two centimeters and eight centimeters, they gradually transition from the near color to the far color. We want the near color to be pink and the far color to be green. So connect the pink color node to the near color input and the green color node to the far color input. To make the material more interesting, let's add some thin film. So select the standard material and increase the thin film thickness to 400 nanometers. And to see the thin film effect, lower the reflection IR to 1 because thin film has its own IR. Next, go to the render settings and change the mode to advanced and enable denoising. We'll use OIDN and set the quality to high. Now we can go through the timeline and take a look at a few frames. Pretty cool. The second setup is quite similar to the first one. Let's take a look at the final animation. Now, instead of cylinders, we are using the circles and making the balloons go through them. The scene is already cached, so we can play the simulation and watch the animation. As I mentioned, this is basically the same setup, but with tubes instead of cylinders, I have adjusted the balloons cloner to make the clones distribution wider and use slightly different materials and colors. Let me start IPR again. Obviously, here we have different colors, a bit different materials, and it looks pretty cool. If I open the balloons material, I can switch between the current black material or the green material from the previous setup using the shader switch node. Pretty cool. For now, let's get back to the pink and black setup. I've also used a dark background color instead of the pink one from the previous scene. Now, this sense shader is pretty cool, but it is pretty time intensive for the final render. If I open up the balloons shader and select the distance node, you notice I have lowered the samples count from the default 256 to 128. Higher samples result in higher quality and more accurate distance calculations, but it takes longer to render. Smaller objects or more complex shapes require higher sample counts to get more accurate results. If instead of a sphere we had a more complex shape or uh, they were much smaller, we needed more samples but 128 is enough for this scene and it cuts the render time in half. And also if I open up the render setting, I've also increased the noise threshold to 0.02 as the shading is fairly simple and we could get away with 0.02. We also have the noising obviously. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Octane, Corona, Vera, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.